you to stop what you're doing and listen. Hello and welcome back to episode 7. I am joined by the booty god. I just so happen to be Mosh. First things first, Activision has laid off hundreds of people this past week. This is an article from PC Gamer. During today's Activision Blizzard fourth quarter results conference call, CEO Bobby Kotick announced that the company had a record year in 2018 and that it will reduce complexity and duplication, confirming reports of impending layoffs. So this happened like the day after I uploaded the last podcast, so we're like a week late. It also says we're staffing up production on our incubation efforts faster and increasing our investment in live services, in our tools, in our battle.net platform, and in new areas like our fast-growing esports and advertising efforts, but all with an intense focus on excellence so we never disappoint our players. Our pipeline is excellent and our development talent the very best in the world but we need to refocus our efforts so that our development and production resources are better aligned with our priorities. We're reducing or eliminating investment in games and initiatives that weren't living up to player expectations or our leadership teams have determined may not live up to player expectations in the future. To drive improved execution and to fund development investment, we will in certain parts of the business reduce complexity and duplication in our back office functions, consolidate certain commercial operations, and revamp our consumer marketing capabilities to reflect our continued migration to a largely digital network. Later in the earnings call, Activision COO Cody Johnson stated that the company will be laying off approximately 8% of its employees, which amounts to hundreds of layoffs given the size of Activision Blizzard. The company has over 9,000 employees. Prior to the call, Kotaku obtained a letter reportedly sent by Blizzard president J. Allen Brack saying that the expansion of the company's non-development teams over the past few years have left some staffing levels out of proportion with the developer's current release plans. This means we need to scale down some areas of our organization. I'm sorry to share that we will be parting ways with some of our colleagues in the U.S. today, Brock Brack wrote in the letter. In our regional offices, we anticipate similar evaluations subject to local requirements. Brack said that employees who are laid off will be given a comprehensive severance package, as well as a profit-sharing bonus and job search assistance. Based on Kodak and Brack's comments, as well as a source who spoke to PC Gamer anonymously, the layoffs will primarily affect community, esports, and other departments not directly involved with programming, art, and game design. The Warcraft development team, for instance, has not been affected. In the same conference call, Activision said that Blizzard won't be releasing any major new games this year, but that the Diablo development team will be growing. Overall, Blizzard's management is reinforcing its pipeline with more resources than ever before to support planned mobile titles. Several PC and console releases and WoW's continued cadence of content. Last month, Activision Blizzard brought on a new CFO, Dennis Durkin, who received $15 million just for taking the job. Congrats, Dennis Durkin. I also read that in 2017, Activision Blizzard made $7.16 billion. And that last year they made 7.26 billion. So they made a hundred million more dollars and they still laid a bunch of people off. So nice one. I feel like this might be their first step uh, towards prioritizing mobile games like that God of Fall Diablo no one wanted. The way they announced that was just bad. Yeah, phones, don't you? <laughs> I think I don't think people are necessarily mad that there's a mobile Diablo. I think it's just we wanted Diablo four. Yeah, but I think they could have went about it better. Like you could have teased Diablo four, and then after that said to hold you guys over. Here's a mobile Diablo instead of going to BlizzCon, which is primarily PC gamers having your little conference, ending it on Diablo, making everyone think it's four, and then being like, nah, it's a mobile version. Like when Fallout 4 came out, I'm pretty sure uh, the mobile game came out around the same time those Fallout 4 was announced to like hold players over, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, yeah, Shelter? Yeah, no one really complained about Shelter because it was, it was kind of fun for a bit. It's not as fun more, but it was, it was there to hold people off for like the hype of Fallout 4. Blizzard straight up destroyed any... Uh, expectations and trust with most uh, consumers with the stunt they pulled. 
keep it on the Activision train. Some more info came out about why Activision and Bungie split. And there's a whole article on it on Forbes. It's kind of long and I don't really feel like reading it. So I'm just kind of shorten it up. Basically, it's Activision split because not because Destiny was doing poorly, but because they don't own it. And they wanted to incorporate things into it. But since they don't fully own it, they couldn't do that. Split boxes. Basi- yeah, basically microtransactions. I mean, what else would it be? Also, after this report of them laying off people, they had to talk about the new Call of Duty to, you know, make sure everyone was happy again. They confirmed it was going to be made by Infinity Ward, which we already knew that. They said it will have a campaign huge and expansive multiplayer world and fun co-op gameplay, and it will be rooted in franchise history. I, I want to say Spec Ops for some reason is like returning. Well, that's what I was thinking too, because Spec Ops was in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, and it's rumored this is Modern Warfare 4. So like that would make sense. It says it's rooted in franchise history, which could mean two things. One, World War 2, which I highly doubt, and two... Modern Warfare, because Call of Duty 4 is what kicked this whole thing off. So another reason why this could very well be Modern Warfare 4. But Modern Warfare 4 doesn't need to happen, though. That's the thing. They concluded the story. There's nowhere else to go. Well, that's why it's a prequel to 2. <sighs> Dude, I called it in the first episode. If it's true, I got bragging rights. If it's not, you don't got bragging rights, and then some. That's true. But I want to bring up something that might be interesting okay so i mentioned the activision bungie destiny split for a reason is there a possibility modern warfare 4 is a looter shooter (laughs) god because it says huge expansive multiplayer world expansive multiplayer world fun co-op gameplay if they couldn't do what they wanted to do in destiny why not do it in their own game that they own that's a hard pass for me destiny itself isn't even that fun when it does looter shooter it's just that uh it's in space you have aliens and you play with friends that's what gives it the slight edge of being fun yeah but then you you get grounded into like near realistic expectations of call of duty it'll be like the division oh that's definitely hard pass then (laughs) good god i don't know it's just the way they're wording it it's like Who'd want to waste their money on the third division? I don't know. I think the campaign will tie into that. I think it'll still have normal multiplayer in a BR, but it'll... I don't know. The wording just makes me think it's a looter shooter. If they really want the looter shooter... Assuming that's what they're going for, if they really want that to work, they should scrap BR because that's, that market's going to die off pretty soon now. We're starting to hit the peak like we have tetris battle royale for god's sake <laughs> you ruined my surprise for later there is no surprise that people need to know now we have tetris for god's sake we have hit peak meme tier battle royale status and i don't even like using meme tier as a way to scri- describe things but that's legitimately what battle royale is at this point Ugh. only downhill from here unless some random company comes out of the woodworks with some God-given uh, Battle Royale of their own, but I doubt that's going to happen. So the whole genre just needs to kind of die off now while it still has a chance to sa- save itself. Well, fueling the Modern Warfare 4 rumors even more, Robert Bowling, the former community manager of Infinity Ward, has been praising Respawn's new game Apex Legends because they're the old Infinity Ward. They work together, they're friends, yada, yada. Anyway, he was tweeting out about Uh, Apex and how he loves the game and someone responded to him saying that they're tired of BR and they want a fun modern shooter again so Robert responded to them and said you are getting a modern shooter this year do not worry and then that person responded and said someone else wants infinite warfare too and he said you will never in all caps get infinite warfare too god bless so Robert himself said you're getting a modern shooter this year however nowhere in these tweets was call of duty ever mentioned but it's very much implied that that is what he is referring to. And he also, he sent out his own tweet saying, release Modern Warfare 4, include single player, multiplayer, and co-op, make Blackout 
free to play before the launch, released a new Modern Warfare map for Blackout with new Modern Warfare themed seasons, include locations for Crash Overgrown and Favela, maintain it as a default BR mode for the series. So he himself even said Infinity Ward should make Modern Warfare 4. And he's got inside knowledge. I mean, the dude worked for them. So if he's saying it, and he's saying we need, we're need, we getting a Modern Warfare or a modern shooter, I don't see how it's anything other than Modern Warfare 4 at this point. It better be a prequel then. Is that you, Waver? Yeah. Where'd you come from? <laughs> he's been here for like the last 10 minutes. Oh, well, hello, Waver. Yep. <laughs> All right, so fueling even more rumors... A website called GamingIntel.com apparently has leaks and says Modern Warfare 4 apparently is coming with Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 Remastered. And that's coming from a QA tester. It says the former QA tester claims that Call of Duty's next game will be titled Modern Warfare 4. Surprisingly, the anonymous source claims that the next entry will come with Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 Remastered, although they also mention that it will be campaign only with the possibility of multiplayer being released on both throughout the year. Although that's not to say Activision don't have plans to bundle Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 Remastered alongside Modern Warfare 4 later this year. I don't know how many times I have to say Modern Warfare. Oh my god. Take a shot each time you do from now on. I'm dead says, without any word on this leak, especially, there is currently no indication as to how trustworthy it is. According to the anonymous source, Modern Warfare 4's DLC model will be very different from Black Ops 4. There will be 15 maps for the pass, which will release alongside free maps rolling out throughout the year. Furthermore, free monthly COD points may also be on the horizon. As in addition to the following DLC weapons, access to beta extra login bonuses, and four special character costumes. Uh, other alleged Modern Warfare leaks, supply drops are still there, the same system as Infinite Warfare's. Gross. Raven Software is apparently developing a World War II warlike mode. Gross. Customization will allow you to change head accessories, such as beanies, hats, helmets, and more. You will also have the ability to alter your shirts, vests, legs, feet, and gloves. Killstreaks are similar to Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. Many original guns from the Modern Warfare series will be featured. The game will have co-op play and a camo reward system for playing. Interestingly, prior to this leak, Activision already confirmed that an all-new co-op experience is on the horizon. Apparently, it is a survival-based mode. Gross. The campaign is set to be 7-8 to eight hours long on normal difficulty. And pro perks will return. Whew. Yeah, I don't know how reliable any of this source stuff is. Uh, Charlie Intel has not reported any of this, and they're like the number one source. So until they start saying stuff, I would take this with a grain of salt, as they say. But we're not done talking about Call of Duty. February 21st, League Play is entering Black Ops 4. Thank God. So all the tryhards can go there. Yeah, you thought wrong. Yeah, I'm probably still going to get smacked. Yeah, I'm probably going to get smacked too. Next operation is called the Grand Heist, and it will be on February 19th, and there will be a big balance patch to go with it. A bunch of guns, getting some changes, a couple specialist changes, all that stuff. All right, lastly for Call of Duty today, WWE wrestler Booker T sues Activision over Call of Duty's profit character. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Booker, Booker T. Huffman, famous among wrestling fans as WWE superstar Booker T, has filed a copyright infringement lawsuit against Activision, alleging that the Call of Duty character David Prophet Wilkes is based upon G.I. Bro, a persona Huffman created in the early years of his wrestling career. In 2015, Huffman collaborated with Travis Huffman, no relation, on drawings based on the character and ultimately a comic book called G.I. Bro and the Dragon of Death. Huffman has promoted the character and books by appearing as G.I. Bro at comic events and is credited as the author and sole owner of the property. He's also applied for copyrights of on the artwork and comics. Prophet's first appearance in Black Ops 3 depicted him as heavily augmented with cybernetics, but in last year's Black Ops 4, he appears as his pre-aug self, and therein lies the trouble. Huffman's filing includes an image of the G.I. Bro art next to a Black Ops 4 promo shot of Prophet, and superficially, at least, they do look very alike. And they show the two pictures together, and there is a little bit of a similarity. It's not identical, but it's pretty close. Micah Dorch, Micah, not a name I like, 
of Potts Law Firm, which is representing Huffman, put it in somewhat firmer terms in a blog post. When seen side by side, there can be no question that this character was copied from G.I. Bro. From the hair, body type, and clothing, right down to the facial expressions, the similarities are too profound to be an accident. Booker T has devoted a significant amount of time and money creating an organically growing He's G.I. Bro character. The entrepreneurial investment should not be erased by such a blatant act of copyright infringement by a gaming juggernaut. The lawsuit states that Black Ops 4 achieved $500 million in sales in its first three days of release, and total sales are thought to exceed $1 billion. Booker T has never authorized defendants to reproduce his G.I. Bro works, including the depictions of the character Book or G.I. Bro in any form. Booker T has never entered into any agreements of any kind with defendants. Uh, in fact, to his knowledge, Booker T has never personally had any contact with defendants, it says. These infringing activities have resulted in hundreds of millions of dollars in sales of infringing copies of Booker T's G.I. Bro works. Anyway, they're going to try to go to trial with it. And that's by PC Gamer. I'll put a link in the description if anyone wants to see the side-by-side -side comparisons. Well, you forgot about Mortal Kombat 11. Man, we haven't even got... What, what do you, what, what, what's going on Mortal Kombat 11? We have Cabal, who was apparently a, a fan-requested favorite. I had no clue. I never assumed people liked him as much as they do. He, he was almost striker tier, but not striker tier to me. But um, I'd say the real big piece for Mortal Kombat 11 would be the appearance of a very long requested character, and that is Jade. She looks good, though. And just her moves in general. Like, she looks fun. Oh, man, she does. Down from her design um, to the, even the green tint in her, her remnant skin. Her bow staff fatality. Her fatality is good. Or at least that one is. It's really good. I like the touch. The touch at the end where she like spins She's the body. <laughs> I mean, I have Jade now on the list. And I surprisingly got Scarlet. So I'm just waiting for them to add uh, Noob Cybot. And I'm going to oh, yeah. reach. I'm reaching real deep with this one. But if they add Shiva as well, then I'm like. 150 percent sold oh yeah easily like the moment i see noob i'm already sold but add shiva in i will be i'll probably be there uh release night i'm pretty sure noob's gonna show up he has to because i watched the replay of the combat cast and the entire chat was just spamming noob like he's so requested and the chat was also spamming shaggy if there's one thing i've learned is don't really take chat seriously but um Maybe you crazy them for not to do it because if you go to the old games, we see Scorpion die in the Soul NATO, but he comes back. So I'm thinking, since they're going to try and merge the old and the new timeline with other timelines, for what I'm getting, um, Noob should possibly return as the new champion because he's the second person who would be sucked into a Soul NATO and he could probably survive if the Elder Gods decide, oh, we have some use for him now that uh, Raiden's gone. I don't want to say rogue, but he's more like a dictator, a fewer, or something like that. Is a soul NATO stronger than a shark NATO? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you could probably survive a shark NATO in, like, in bits and pieces, but a soul NATO will just pretty much disintegrate you. I guess we can move on to this topic that's more mainly uh -oh. interesting to me as well. Uh-oh. So the other day, uh -oh. I think maybe two days ago, on Twitch TV, uh -oh. there was a Dead or Alive 6 uh, commercial, but in that announcement, a Dead or Alive World Championship was announced at EVO Japan with a total of 10 million yen grabs for the best of the best to share amongst themselves. During its EVO Japan presentation, Team Ninja announced the Dead or Alive World Championship. This global tournament series will ha have qualifiers in North America, Europe, and Asia with the best players from each region proceeding uh, to the grand finals in Japan. The total prize money for qualifiers and grand finals will add up to the sum of 10 million yen. With the tournament dates and locations yet to be announced, we'll have to wait for the further details about Team Ninja's upcoming world um, championship. Their Live 6 is set to release on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on March 1st. I rate, are you planning on picking the game and then entering the Dare Live championship? No. And my answer is no. No tournaments. 
I'm sure there's some random freak of nature that's listening to this who could probably compete and make it pretty far if not outright win it. That's pretty insane. 90k? If I had the skill, I'd definitely go for it, but I don't have the skill, so... Best luck to anyone that isn't Sonic Fox that, <laughs> that um, participates in it. And you can start practicing because the deluxe demo will be exclusive to PlayStation Plus subscribers and Xbox Live Gold members from February 22nd to the 24th. And it will include online ranked and lobby matches, free training, tutorial, command, training, combo challenge, introduction to story mode, and it will feature all 24 characters at launch, including all hairstyles and glasses is a weird thing to mention but whatever surely you'll be you'll be participating in the demo at least again won't you uh if it'll let us team up or face each other because in the beta we couldn't uh i gotta talk about apex because last week i said the prices on things were fine (laughs) and uh, i was referring to the characters because i think 750 for a character is fine i prefer it to be five dollars but it's better than 10, so me in the middle, 750. Anyway, I was looking through the store more, and the prices on everything else are just insane. Like there was a banner for Valentine's Day, eleven dollars for a banner. There's gun camos that are eighteen dollars, and it's specific to that weapon. I think it was for the alternator and the prowler before that. You can't use it on any other gun, just those guns. And the alternator sucks. So to spend $18 on a skin is ridiculous. And then there's a different variant of that skin. So you have to buy the first skin for 18 And then if you want the variant, you have to spend 6,500 tokens on it. Which again is insane. If you could use the camo on any gun, then it's a little bit more reasonable. Still really expensive, but a little bit more reasonable. And it's just weird to me because in Titanfall 2, if you bought a camo... You could use it on your gun, any gun. You could use it on your character. You could use it on any of your Titans guns and on your Titan. And the camos in that game were like, it was like $2 for 20 camos. So this is like a complete 180 of what they did in Titanfall, which I, I will never buy a gun skin. They're probably following Fortnite's example where they charge dollars for a stupid skin, but they know people will still eat it up like it's a hot cake. I guess, but 18 for a gun camo? Especially on a gun that sucks? Like, man. Speaking of Fortnite, you can get the Season 8 Battle Pass for free <laughs> if you do 13 <laughs> overtime challenges. <laughs> so I guess at some point during the season, they extended the season by a couple weeks, so it's usually 10 weeks, but I guess it's a little longer now. No, but to like put it in perspective how like unfun it is, I'd rather endure playing uh like six hours of League of Legends straight than play Fortnite at this point. That's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> it's that bad now, man. Yeah, but there's gonna be twenty of these challenges, and if you complete thirteen, you get the season eight battle pass for free. I'm pretty sure you have to have the Season 7 Battle Pass to even do these challenges. But anyway, you can thank Apex Legends for this because there's no way they'd be doing this if Apex wasn't giving them a run for their money right now. Moving on, we're going to talk about Nintendo for once. Nintendo did a Direct the other day, and they announced Super Mario Maker 2. They announced Dead by Daylight is coming to Nintendo Switch. Oh, that's going to be real good. Boy, you should have seen the frame rate on the trailer they showed. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's some of the worst offender. <laughs> and they announced a complete remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, which is cool for people that want that. It looks, it kind of looks like a 3DS game, but like better graphics. It still kind of has the top down look. It's very round. It's like round and bubbly looking and colorful. Kind of like the older games. It's weird. I, know, I wasn't really all too hyped for it. I don't know if it's because I'm I don't own a Switch or I'm not like the biggest Zelda fan around. It's like I think I'm just holding out hope that the that there will be like a a Twilight Princess like updated version or like maybe even a sequel or something. I mean Majora's Mask. Twilight Princess is the only Zelda I've played. 
ready to be crucified by a legion of Zelda players or whatever. But a few of the older games interest me, but not enough to go out and buy a Switch. Now, you would think that the remake or the announcement of the Link's Awakening remake would be the highlight of this Direct, but you are wrong. Switch has one Battle Royale game in Fortnite, and they needed to amp it up. So introducing Tetris 99, the Tetris Battle Royale game for the ages, it's already out, it's free, go nuts. Also, a few games released on this past Friday, the 15th. We had Metro Exodus. <laughs> Anthem went into EA Early Access. Jump Force. The Easy Cash Grab in Far Cry New Dawn. And the incredible Xbox One accomplishment of Crackdown 3. <laughs> Moving on. Resident Evil 2 also <laughs> released free DLC on the 15th. The Ghost Survivors which follows the stories of a lone umbrella soldier, a mayor's daughter, and a gun shop owner. It's cool because the game hasn't even been out a month yet, and they already gave free DLC. But along with the DLC, they gave the original models of Claire and Leon for free as well. So if you want to download what they originally look like in the PS1 version and go nuts with your squares and polygon... <laughs> Next up, we have a Reddit post about someone saying they want Twisted Metal to come back, but as a free-to-play car battle royale game. It has over 38,000 upvotes, so clearly people agree with them. I just, I really like Twisted Metal, but I don't know about this, because how exactly would it work? Because Twisted Metal has a lot of characters. They all have their own vehicles with different abilities. So, like... Do you pick these characters and go into battle? Because what if one of the characters is overpowered? Everyone's just going to use them. Or do you have your own, like, junker of a car and you just go around with pickups? And, like, I just, I'm not sure how it would work. Unless they do it like a team, like Apex, where you have a team of three or four. You all pick your character and then you go and do it. I don't, I don't know. They could do it kind of similar to Jack X. You like there's pickup or like power ups or abilities like kind of lying around like how you pick up a weapon in normal battle royale and mm -hmm. you just like drive into those so you're for like a like x amount of time you have an ability or you have it permanently until you like not permanently but until like you use all of it up they could approach like that that'd be the most sound way of going about it but yeah I'd, I'd rather just have a full game. If they did a remake, it'd have to be of either Black or 2. Those are the only two games that could get remade. But the thing is, the PS3, we're almost going a full generation without a Twisted Metal game. Last one was on PS3, and they introduced kind of like a new story with Sweet Tooth, and the way they ended it means that there's more to it. So I don't know if they would try to continue that or just pretend it never existed, because it was kind of weird, and I don't know if I want them to really go down that path. It's kind of cheap. I'd, I'd rather have a full game if you want to have a battle royale mode attached to it that's fine but a normal game with a story sweet tooth has to be in it because he's the face of the whole franchise and just normal multiplayer modes maybe a tdm would be cool i've never played it so i wouldn't really know it's shocking i'm pretty sure i mean they're all kind of the same in a way because like calypso's the main dude and he's basically the devil Something happens to the characters, they go to Calypso, and he says, I'll grant you a wish, but you have to join the Twisted Metal Tournament, and if you win, I will grant you your wish. And they're like, okie dokie. So then they go and do it, and then he's like, here's your wish, but there's always a twist to it. So they get what they want, but they don't, and Calypso always wins. So like a genie, kind of. Yeah, so like in the PS3 version of Twisted Metal... Like, Dollface, I think she was a model or something, and I think something happened to her face, and she's like, oh, I'm not pretty anymore, I can't be a model. So she put the mask on, and she went to clips on, she's like, I just want to be beautiful again, blah, blah, blah. She wins it, he does that for her, and she's all happy, and then I think she gets hit by a truck and dies. <laughs> and then Sweet Tooth, I think, um, he tried to kill his family, or I think he killed his wife, and then he went to try to kill his daughter, she stabbed him in the eye with scissors and got away. She then went to like a mental hospital because she was traumatized. 
she ended up shooting herself in the head and killing herself. This whole time, Sweet Tooth went to Calypso and was like, I need to find my daughter because I want to kill her, blah, blah, blah. He does the thing. Calypso's like, here's your wish. And then Sweet Tooth appears underground in a coffin with his daughter's dead body on top of him. And then he dies because he's buried alive. So then apparently he had a son. The son, this happens years later, goes to the grave, digs up the body, takes the mask, and is like, Calypso killed my dad, and I want revenge. So then he becomes Sweet Tooth. But then Calypso goes to the grave and resurrects the daughter from the dead, gives her a clown mask, and now she's like his puppet. I don't know. So in music news, Bring Me the Horizon has canceled the last two dates of their North American tour, Phoenix and Las Vegas. Vocalist Oliver Sykes ruptured his right vocal cord, and he has to heal. I'm pretty sure that's what ruined his voice the first time. Yep. He released a statement, said, I'm gutted to announce we have to cancel the remainder of our American tour. I ruptured my right vocal cord, and I've been told if I don't rest it immediately, I'm in serious danger of doing permanent damage. I've been trying to do my best to fulfill our commitments, as I really hate letting you guys down. Not to mention these shows have been literally the most fun ever, but at this point, me singing would be the equivalent of a football player running on a broken leg. Once again, I'm so sorry. I hope you all understand. So during some of their shows, they've been doing like a medley of their old songs where he's been screaming. Uh. So people think that that's what did it. But he responded to someone on Twitter and said that that's not the case. He said it's actually easy for him. And it's the clean singing that's been giving him a hard time. So Jordan more or less sounds like a clean Oliver, just more fine, in my opinion. Yeah. Jordan can easily take over. If he needs to. The other two bands on the tour, Thrice and Fever 333, also had to drop off. I don't know what Thrice is doing. They just said that they were sorry. But Fever 333 said, We've been made aware that due to unforeseen circumstances, the remaining dates of the first love tour with Bring Me the Horizon have been postponed. Then they went on to say, To those friends and allies who had planned on attending our demonstrations, we will be back in Arizona March 23rd at KFMA Day and Vegas very soon. KFMA Day is basically just a festival that a radio station in Tucson puts on. Tucson's like two-hour drive south of Phoenix, so that'll be March 23rd. Fever 333 will also be appearing on UFest, which is a festival that 98KUPD puts on in Phoenix. So that will be April 20th. So March 23rd, Tucson. April 20th, Phoenix. Also shout out to KUPD because... I've been listening to them since I basically since I was born and I still listen to them to this day. I know 2019 still listen to the radio. Sure do. But it's because they're really good. Got good uh, music, good DJs, all that good stuff. So actually, I will leave a link in the description to their website because you can listen to it and stream. You can stream it anywhere. So there's you can see all the tabs. And then right below that, it says listen live. Click that. Good to go. I'm going to make a prediction. After the burial, I say a new song comes out in the next two weeks. Between now and March 1st, because today's the 17th. Between now and March 1st, I am telling you, they will drop a new song. And if it doesn't happen, I'm never predicting anything ever. <laughs> also, I also want to clarify something that I said last week about the rap. In that I look at some rappers' appearances and it like turns me off. I just want to say I was talking about people like Takashi69 and Lil Xan and Lil Pump. Because they look stupid. The whole like SoundCloud face tattoo thing. That's what drives me away. I think Lil Xan has something wrong with him. Every time I see a picture of him, his mouth is open. I don't think he can close his mouth. I'm telling you, he drools. Like there's no way he wakes up and there's not a puddle of drool somewhere. <laughs> he looks like he just came out of a 20 year coma. Next up is Periphery. Because I forgot to talk about it last week. They did release their new song, Blood Eagle. The album is called Hail Stan. And. It's a very good song. It's the heavier side of Periphery, which is always nice to hear. Oh, my God. I actually, I actually heard it for the first time yesterday. What? I'm driving to the mall, right? And that was like an hour-long drive because of traffic. But once Blood Eagle came on, I'm talking the skies were like dark gray, like almost nighttime gray. Hearing Blood Eagle come on was an experience. Oh, my God. Because with Periphery, their music kind of... It's always, it always feels like a marigold, flatline kind of sound, but hearing that heavy 
jam, progressive guitar going off with that setting with something else. Well, most of your album sounds like Blood Eagle. I'll probably have it in my top five albums from 2019, maybe even for 2020, like spanning that long. It was a godly song. And I recommend, even if you don't like metal or anything, you don't like heavy music, give it a chance. Because Blood Eagle is some good stuff. I want to talk about the uh, name of it, though. The Blood Eagle. Pretty brutal. So a Blood Eagle is basically, it's like a Norse Viking execution. Torture. Yeah, execution. So basically, the victims were placed in a prone position and their ribs were severed from their spine through their back. And it would look like wings and obviously they'd be bleeding. So it was like a Blood Eagle. And it would be like a sacrifice to Odin or whatever. And th that's basically what the song is. So I'm going to like read some of the lyrics. Uh, it says, we come for war, king of the north and Norse, with drums beating, screams repeating, and the hammer force of Thor. Surrender not enough, the Christian seed will sing amongst the soil of trees. From the sea is the destroyer. From the sea is an eagle drenched in blood. Blood eagle. Blood Eagle is the destroyer. Blood Eagle will set the wicked free. Rip the body from bone now. Spreading the heaven's wings. Show Valhalla glory and memory. Let them, let them, let the Christians sing. Repeats that part. Let out the roar. Barbaric to the core. A storm brewing. All our doing for Odin is at the door. The spoils are not enough. We'll let them bleed. The moon takes everyone tonight the christians sing how they sing amongst the broken wings from the sea is the eagle drenched in blood the christians sing how they sing amongst the broken wings a soul descending swiftly the burning stench of afterlife no rays from heaven only high sun pleading to the sky once more weeping for the self for the abandoned children of christ have been laid to waste on the shelf Pour out the tide of Valkyries, the land is ours to claim. No man or woman escaped the fire. We come for war. Surrender not enough, let them bleed. The moon takes everyone tonight. I was expecting you to perform like Spencer, but I guess I'll work too. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Between myself and him, one is... A little bit more talented than the other. Also, the son of Chester Bennington, Jamie Bennington, is going to re-record some of his dad's old songs on vocals for his dad's old band called Grey Days, which was the band he was in here in Arizona before he went and joined Linkin Park. So that could be cool. I mean, I've heard some clips of him singing, and he's, he's good, but it was on slower songs. So it'll be interesting to see how he sounds on like a more up-tempo rock song. But if he's good and he can pull it off, is it impossible for him to possibly join Linkin Park and replace his dad? There's something to think about. All right, lastly, Crystal Lake released their new album on February 15th titled Helix. So this album actually came out on November 28th of last year, but only in Japan because the band is from Japan and they just recently signed to an American label. So this past Friday, it got like its worldwide release. And any releases going forward should be normal. There shouldn't be any, like, Japan exclusivity. At least I don't think there will be. But anyway, Crystal Lake is a Japanese metalcore band from Tokyo, Japan, formed in 2002. The band currently consists of Ryo Kinoshita, vocals, Yude Miyamoto, lead guitar, Shinya Hori, rhythm guitar, Gaku Tora, drums, and Bitoku Sakamoto on bass. So this band's been around a while. A lot of people think they're newer, but they're not. The two guitarists are the original members from back in the day. And the current vocalist joined in 2012. And basically that's when this band kind of hit the reset button, kind of started over. So they were pretty much only in Japan and they didn't really make it anywhere else. Brought in the new vocalist. He kind of brought like a new energy to the band and all that. I believe their lyrics used to be only in Japanese. Now they're in English, which is a lot better because a lot more people in this world understand English than Japanese. So it helps bring in a bigger audience when you have English lyrics. 
They're also touring for the first time ever in the United States right now. I don't know if it's their first time ever being in the U.S., but like I don't know if they've come here on trips on their own. But if it is their first time ever being here, then I'm sure it's quite a scenery change because they were here in Arizona the other day. And Arizona and Japan are, you know, a little different. But it's cool because, like I said, the two guitarists have been doing this since 2002 and they're just now starting to see success. So you got to respect the dedication and determination for those guys. So right off the bat, the first track is called Helix and it's an intro. It's like 11 seconds long. It's just like a robot voice that leads right into the first main song, which is Aeon or Eon. I, I pronounce it Aeon. A-E-O-N. That's Aeon to me. Anyway, easily the best song on the album. It's really, really good. It's fast paced. Vocals, there's some like death metal vocals or some black metal vocals, it's like their standard metalcore style. It's kind of all over the place, but that, that's why it's great. My only issue with this song is that it's too short, but that's probably what makes it good because it leaves you wanting more. Aeon then leads right into Agony. There's like beeping sounds at the end of Aeon, which starts off Agony. It's also probably the second best song on the album, so two best songs right out the gate. This one has kind of deathcore vocals to it with a nice chorus and some cleans. Uh, near the end of the song, there's clean vocals, and then the instruments join in, then the instruments cut out with the vocals only, and then the song ends. It's just a really good song. Next up is Plus 81. This song, it's good. It's a good, solid song. My only complaint, really, is some of the lyrics are just... Uh, you know, they could be better. Next song is Lost in Forever. This is like your standard Crystal Lake type of song. I mean, once you hear it, you'll just know. There's not much to say about this song because it's kind of similar to a few other songs on the album, which I will get to. Next song is Outgrow. This song starts off calmer than the others. It's a little bit slower at the beginning. There's some few uh, screaming vocals, some yelling type vocals. Uh, there's a little breakdown in the middle. A little short guitar solo adds a nice little touch to it. Next is Ritual, which is an intro to the song after that, which is Hail to the Fire. This is like, this song is like a tribal song. It sounds like a New Zealand, Hawaiian tribe. It's like chants. I, I don't know how else to describe it other than that. And just under a minute in, there's like this really weird transition that happens where the song's playing and then it just cuts to like a drum fill just sounds awkward i'm not really sure why that's in there or why they decided to keep it like that i would definitely have changed that but it's not my song not my band not my problem next song is called devil cry this song is kind of like lost in forever again kind of like that crystal lake sound there's a little bit of a rap vocal delivery in some parts and uh like i said it's kind of like lost in forever but a little bit heavier song after that is just confusing this is the worst song on the album at the beginning, there's a phone vibrating. At, like in the middle of the song somewhere, there's a phone vibrating. And at the very end of the song, there's a phone vibrating. I don't like it. I don't get it. It just seems very out of place on this album. And I'm not sure why they incorporated it. That might be why the song is called Just Confusing. Because we're all confused as to why it exists. Like the song on its own is not bad. Just not on this album. It belongs somewhere else. It's kind of like a rap song, too, but with guitars in it. I mean, like I said, it's not a bad song. Next song is Apollo. Again, similar to Devil Cry, Lost in Forever. It's kind of like that standard Crystal Lake kind of song. Again, this is what I'm talking about. Other songs on the album kind of sound the same. The guitar in the beginning of this song almost sounds Asian. It has like an Asian flair to it, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then there's a vocal part later on in the song where... It, Jonathan Davis of Korn would be proud. I'll just say that. And then the final song on the album is called Sanctuary. And the first few seconds of this song will make you think you're listening to the new Bring Me the Horizon. But then you are quickly reminded that this is Crystal Lake and not Bring Me the Horizon. And again, this is also similar to Apollo, Devil Cry, Lost and Forever. These standard kind of Crystal Lake songs. Some clean vocals, which is always welcome. And it's, it's a pretty good song for the ender. Not a bad song to end it all on. With that said, I'd give this album a solid 8 out of 10. So right now it's sitting in second place for albums this year. I've only done four of them, but Fever 333 is number one at 9 out of 10. Helix Crystal Lake second with 8 out of 10. Simulation Born of the Cyrus 
in third with 7.5 out of 10, and Bring Me the Horizon with Ammo in fourth with a 7 out of 10. So that's going to be it from us today, and we will talk to you guys next week. Adios. Adios.